Hey guys, it's Christopher. Welcome to another Solaris tutorial. Um, in this video, I will explain sensors. Here, sensors are invisible entities um, that have no particular properties. Their only goal is to detect the presence of the hero or of other entities if you want, but most of the time, the hero. So, for example, and you can resize them. So, for example, if you want to know when when the player um, goes here and do something special, you can put a sensor, and then in your script you can do whatever you want. So let's call this sensor. And for example, let's say that uh, when the hero is on the sensor, you want to put him back to the entrance of the room for some reason you can imagine we can imagine that it's part of some puzzle so function sensor on activated so there is a, an unactivated function just like for switches sensors they are documented documented here and this is our main event Unactivated called when the hero of the lap the sensor. And hero set position, starting destination, get position. Okay, we put the hero just here on the starting destination, the ent entrance of the room. Okay, so it works. Um, Let's just, just play the, the wrong sound. The, so the sound called wrong, not the wrong sound. Because I don't know, you, you, you can imagine that it's part of, of a puzzle. The hero has to do something special or else he's not authorized to cross. And um, yeah, you, you could do more or less the same thing with a teletransporter or a switch but the main difference is that sensors are really unavoidable they are not interactive switches are interactive because they have can have a sprite they can play a sound and they can be avoided if the hero jumps over over them so even in a game where you don't give the ability to jump to the player, uh, he can still jump. For example, when he is hurt by an enemy, um, he is pushed um, a few pixels away from the enemy. And if this happens, he can avoid switches and teletransporters. So this is really not the same purpose. Sensors are really more technical. Um, and let's see a second example of sensor. So I made a hole here and actually I want I don't want a hole that sends to another floor. I want a hole that just hurts the hero. And by default when you fall in a hole the hero is put back at the at the last solid coordinates. So at the last coordinates where the ground was not yet the hole. So what we want to do is to put the hero back to the entrance of the room. So a way to do that is to use a sensor. We'll call this solid ground sensor. One. We put the sensor at the entrance of the room and another identical sensor so this one is called solid ground sensor 2 at the other entrance of the, of the room so and in our script we will say solid ground sensor unactivated and actually there is a function in the type hero to do just that 
to remember some coordinates to go back when the player falls in a hole or in lava or in water without the swim ability and this function is just save solid ground and parameters are optional if you don't specify any parameters oops it will be the current position of the hero okay so we'll save the solid ground when entering from here or from here and since there is no other way to enter the room uh, it will work oops solid ground sensor no nil value it's called like this and actually there is a second one and okay this time I, I was sent back to the entrance here and same thing here okay so the last sensor used saves the position and we go back to the entrance of the room so then you might want to slightly improve the code there are two problems here the pro first problem is that um, you have to specify the we, spe we had called the name of each of every sensor here so, if we ever add another another entrance to the room, let's say another door, it would be very nice to just copy paste the sensor, and that the script somehow uh, directly works. But it's not the case. You have to do this. Okay. So to fix this problem what you can do instead is to automatically get all entities that start with this name whose name starts with this prefix F so for sensor in and there is a function to do that it's map get entities and if, if you pass a string here it will be the prefix so this will return an iterator to all entities of the map whose name start with this and for all of them we will assign the event so sensor so actually you can do like this sensor unactivated save solid ground remember that defining a function like this is actually an assignment of a function of type of a uh, value of type function to the sensor so we don't hard code in the map script the number of sensor and their ex exact names but it just works so that's already much better And this is exactly equivalent to um, this. So if you were not, uh, if you are not a Lua expert, the the uh, colored notation here is actually the same as oops, as a dot here, and then putting the same param putting the the object itself as as the first parameter it's exactly the same thing and i'm saying that to emphasize better that this is only an assignment of a value of type function so this is also equivalent to sensor dot activated unactivated equals function like this. It's again exactly the same thing.
And by the way, we don't even use this parameter for this specific example. So the the colon notation here is uh, um, is the object oriented programming notation, but it's it's just syntactic sugar for for this. And I'm saying all this because I want to avoid to define three identical functions here because I'm in the for loop. So we have three uh, different function values that have exactly the same code. So uh, maybe Lua could be able to optimize this. I have no idea, but for me, it's not very clean. We should define the function here as a local value. Local function um, solid ground sensor on activated. That takes the sensor of, as a parameter. Oops, and we assign this. Oops, this function here in the loop. Okay, so we have only one function, and all sensors will uh, have this this function in their unactivated event. So for me this is cleaner. And this is also equivalent to local so one sensor on activated equals function sensor like this. So you can use the notation you prefer. All of this should work the same. Yep, still works. Um, okay, so this is that's, this is it about uh, the basic usage of sensors. We have some generic code here that will automatically work for all sensors of the map, provided that they have this, the correct prefix. Because in a real game, you you can imagine a dungeon with a lot of rooms and a lot of doors. But um, we will see in a more advanced tutorial that it's even possible to uh, define this only once globally for the whole game. So for all sensors of all maps ever, you will be able to define uh, this behavior if they have the, the prefix you want. It will be possible thanks to meta tables, but um, it's more advanced. More advanced, so we'll see this later. For now, it's it's very much okay to for you to put these um, six lines of code in in several maps. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope that you will have fun with sensors. See you next time, bye. See you next time, guys. Bye.